Hey guys, welcome to the pod. The Pea Pod. I'm Ladle. And I'm Peace. And I'm Thomas. And we got a full Ladle of Peace just for you. So, so let's, let's get, get to, to it. it. First time again. First We're getting good at this. Beautiful. When, when he and I are on our own, we can never, <laughs> we takes like four I'm the, takes. I'm the glue guy. You're holding us Seriously. together. Okay, so if you can't tell already, we have another special guest. This guest is going to be here for the remainder of the week. So Yippee! I yeah. hope that you like <laughs> them. Um, this is Thomas. Hey, I'm Thomas. Anyway, so our scripture. <laughs> <laughs> Thomas is... Uh, who are you? I'm Thomas. Um, Thanks. <laughs> 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 Why don't you tell I, us your major? You. See, that's a much from. better question. Do you, do you live on campus? Etc. I'm Thomas. What's your I'm social security number? Mother's maiden name. Yeah. First pet. Credit card number. Credit card number. Yeah. Those cute little numbers on the back. Mm-hmm. I've right and left. Oh, he's just adjusting some things. They okay. can only see. Am right I too now. loud? No. no, I'm too loud. That's. Anyway, continue. Where? What's your major? Where are you from? I'm Thomas. I'm Brennan's friend. We've been friends for a while. And then I have, by marriage, become friends with Justine because you two got married. And just now, actually. Yeah, actually. Yeah. We were just talking yeah. about this. Yeah, we were um, just talking about that. Uh, Spread the word. Uh, anyway, <laughs> so I am here at Moody. I'm a biblical studies major. I just switched from theology um, because I took a class that I didn't like in theology hmm. and so i switched when and did you do that i did it over the summer or like Wait. right before this batch of classes oh was it oh. an online online class or in person? oh no, no oh the class, the class was class. last semester oh. it was last semester you switched over the summer yes gotcha. so before i signed up for sure this semester's yeah. worth of classes gotcha I switched. yeah Mm-hmm. Yeah. And to answer your question, no, I don't live off campus. I'm in Little India because I got married a year ago. Um, Do you mean on campus? Because you just said, no, I don't live off, off campus. campus. Oh, I meant to say, <laughs> yes, I don't live on <laughs> campus. Yeah. Just smooshed him. You, you smooshed him. I'm smooshed him. Anyway, so there's Thomas for you. Hey, um, Thomas. If you want to learn more, I can't help you. But we have the bible and we're gonna read it now oh (laughs) (laughs) what an abrupt transition i'm sorry it's your specialty yes um we're gonna be in the book of ecclesiastes if you don't know where that is it is after the book of it's in the old it's an old testament book after the book of proverbs before the song of solomon which song of solomon is before isaiah so isaiah is a pretty big book if you end up there just go backwards two books could you go through the whole list all throughout the bible yeah no before (laughs) it's Name everyone it's that it's before Jesus, and everyone. Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, at least. Also, and that's as much as also, got. in here in the Chapman building that we're in right now, there's lots of tours and things going on. So if you hear some background, if you hear noise, background noise or see people behind lovely ladle, yeah, then they literally don't is. even go here. Yeah, actually, the, most of them will probably be ups- like scared to walk behind here because they'll see the TV and anyway. So yeah, that's what's going see on. The stuff happening. We'll and see the red, Brennan's the red face light outside the room. Whatever. <laughs> okay, Ecclesiastes chapter three, verse number nine. I didn't ask if anybody wanted else to read this. I'm going to read it now. Oh, I thought Thomas was reading it. Well, Thomas doesn't no. have it on hand right now. Okay, I have here it we go. In my hand. What gain has the worker from his toil? I have seen the business that God has given to the children of man to be busy with. He has made everything beautiful in its time. Also, he has put eternity into man's heart, yet so that he cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. I perceive that there is nothing better for them than to be joyful and to do good as long as they live. Also, that everyone should eat and drink and take pleasure in all his toil. This is God's gift to man. I perceive that whatever God does endures forever. Nothing can be added to it, nor anything taken from it. God has done it, so that people fear before him. That which is already has been, that which is to be already has been, and God seeks what has been driven away. Real simple passage. So, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) It's pretty dense theologically, but it's got really um, cool... Uh, I don't know, theological ideas in it. So 
the one thing that uh, does anybody want to go first? Do you want? How about you read your fun little thing that you brought with you? Uh, okay, I went to a thrift store before coming here and found a book, and the What's book is Unger's Bible Handbook <laughs> from Moody Publishers, apparently, which I just realized. Oh, that's cool. You, there you go. Sure, if you think it's cool. It is so old, but it says... For chapter three. For chapter three, one through 22, it kind of splits it up into little sections. Mm -hmm. It says, uh, mortality robs man of the fruits of his labors. Man is helpless to understand or alter the predetermined pattern of life. Is his end not like that of the beasts, which is 16 through 22. And that's just a little like, that's the whole. Is that the whole thing for? Yes. It's very wow. short. Okay, yeah. But it gives a little context to what the whole thing is talking about. We're getting stared at right I now. Know. I feel like a zoo. Yeah. I feel yeah. Like <laughs> Here's zoo. the exhibit, guys. Anyway, do you have anything? Yikes. You want to start? Sorry, I'm getting go very first. distracted <laughs> by the people. Too. I am too. Uh, okay, I'll start then and you can <laughs> yeah, get you your go. brain juices flowing. Okay. So the first thing, uh, where did my phone go? Um, this is from the Enduring Word Commentary. I use this whenever I don't have enough time to actually do real work. Um, so this says for the first part, um, the first part that says about what is it? What profit has the worker from which it has, from which, whatever. The first verse. Um, it says, the preacher asked that the kind of question he has asked before, but this time he found an answer in God-given task that God gives to man. So this is this is in comparison to, if you look at the beginning of, uh, I don't know. Where is it? It's somewhere in the beginning. If you think of Ecclesiastes, if you've heard about it before, it's like this book that's very filled of like, life is meaningless, vanity of vanities, why do we do anything? And that's because Solomon, who wrote this book, uh, at least wh who we believe to be Solomon, um, is in this point in life where he's just not understanding why anything is anything. And so he's writing this down, but then there are, um, there's there's these, this editor that it sounds like this other voice that comes in and kind of says yes why does anything exist but everything exists because of god he kind of corrects the preacher is what the other voice is called the preacher and the editor and so in chapter three we just come off of the tales of this huge like why does anything exist why do we do anything and this is supposed to be sort of the redemptive part of that that says um what gain is the worker from his toil that's like the same question he's just been asking um it says, I have, been, I have seen the business that God has given the children of man to be busy with. He has made everything beautiful in its time. And so now this is the God-given answer to that, bef you know, that question that they asked beforehand. He has, been made, he has made everything beautiful in its time. This sense of balance considers the poetic list in the previous section, just like I was mentioning before. Um, Solomon, thought of, Solomon thought of the good and the bad as they were described and understood that God has made everything beautiful in its time. It's a pretty self-explanatory verse. Now, this is the part that I want to get to the most in this section, and that is this, this part on eternality. Because towards the end of, or towards the middle of it, it says that um, um, also he's put eternity into man's heart, yet so that he cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. This idea that eternity is baked into human's heart is pretty, um, I don't know, it's pretty well known in terms of like when you look inside of yourself, you think, okay, like, uh, I'll re let me read a quote here because I pulled it up. Um, this is a quote from um, C.S. Lewis from Mere Christianity. It's one of my favorite quotes, and I was just talking to you about it earlier. Mm -hmm. um, it says, creatures, creatures are not born with desires unless satisfaction for those desires exists. A baby feels hunger, well, there is such a thing as food. A duckling wants to swim, well, there is such a thing as water. And then he goes on to list other examples. And then... If I find in myself a desire which no experience in this world can satisfy, the most probable explanation is that I was made for another world. If none of my earthly pleasures satisfies it, then that does not prove that the universe is a fraud. So, I really like this verse, or not this verse, this quote, because it, oh. it speaks to this eternality. Like, I don't know if you guys, our listeners, or you two either, have had that feeling of, like, it's hard to describe, but you just have this feeling that this this world is not where we're, we're made for, right? You get this sense that there's we're supposed to live on forever. So this feeling of wanting eternality, wanting to li like every 
major fantasy book or movie has something that along the lines of like tuck everlasting right you want to live forever everybody wants to not die because they have this eternality baked mm-hmm. inside of them and that was made f- from god and for god and that's why you know we're going there so that kind of in the rest of the section here um I perceive that there's nothing better for them to do than to be joyful and to do good as long as they live. Also, that everyone should eat and drink and take pleasure in his toil. This is God's gift to man. His gift to man is an understanding of eternality in our hearts, but also because even when we toil, we're toiling to an end, to heaven. Does that make sense? That's how I perceive that part. And I can do more research and such if you don't think that's what he's actually saying. But The way that my study Bible puts it and the way that I like uh, that they phrased it is that uh, we have a desire t- a desire to understand all of life but God has also limited our ability to do so mm-hmm. and right now I'm writing my doctrinal position catechisms for Sistheo, systematic theology for those non-moody's out there and it's bi- that's all that's going through my brain right now because they're due tonight but also uh, the eternality of God and our inability to understand certain aspects of god are part of what makes god god because if we knew everything about god and there was no mystery to be had then there would be no point in there being an eternal god because we would already know everything and Mm -hmm. so god god not revealing all of the secrets to us is his way of saying like you don't need to know all of that and you can rest in that because I have you taken care of. And that's really hard for people to understand because they're like, well, if God really loves me, why don't I know everything already? Mm-hmm. And yeah, I g- it's hard to articulate because I have so many things going in my brain yeah. right now. <laughs> yeah, that's understandable. Do you have anything else you want to add? I mean, what you were saying kind of goes back to like, the biggest problems in Christianity, most of them, like the problem of sin or, and evil. you know, evil, yeah. why there's pain in the world, mm-hmm. all of those kinds of things that they, we don't understand it mm-hmm. yet, and we're just toiling away. But we can appreciate the things that we do have and the things that God has given us, even if we don't have all of the understanding that God has given us. So, you know, mm-hmm. um, talking about... I'm going to find out, what does he say? Like, food and drink and enjoying those oh, yeah, things. Yeah. And, um, yeah. This is God's gift to man. Exactly. Even if we don't have all of the things that we wish we had as Christians mm-hmm. in the first worlds on our way to the second Jerusalem. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's... Yeah. Dr. Johnson... Uh, often likes to say that if there was no mystery to God or trying to solve the mystery of God is heresy because Mm, when you're trying to put those things into a category, you're trying to categorize God, you get into modalism, Arianism, Mm -hmm. you know, fill in the blank. And so I think this passage is one of the biggest, like, just, just leave it. Just stop. (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like, yeah, you know what I mean? I do. And if, you know, you're a Christian and you're looking for, I need to solve all the problems. Go read this passage again, because clearly you don't. <laughs> and mm-hmm. there's several other passages <laughs> throughout scripture that also say the same, um, because scripture is self-attesting. So it proves itself yeah. throughout it. So, yeah. It's a little theology for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's good theology. I had my, um, I had the camera on me th- almost the whole time you were saying that, so. Wow. There was people outside of the door behind you the mm-hmm. whole time, so well, I don't so know if it was, it was a bad idea. Yeah. Guys, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Maybe it was okay. Also, <laughs> one of the guys behind you is wearing the same hat as you. It is a very common hat for October. Yeah. You can't see him on the camera, but I can see him. He's wearing the same hat. I actually uh I actually got this hat from Maddie Brower oh, yeah. like 2 years ago. <laughs> I borrowed it from her. <laughs> Uh, I tried to give it back. She was like, nah. Huh. Just keep it. I was like, really? It's a nice hat. She's there like, I never go. wear it. I tried to order that hat off of Amazon like two years ago, mm-hmm. and they sent me the same hat with a different brand logo oh, okay. on it. Wait. Yeah, wait, it was like Herschel. Did you order it from, <laughs> from, from Amazon? Huh. 
So I, I guess like, whatever company the makes <laughs> makes them, they, you know, and it's one. Do you th- have the hat still? I, I still do. <laughs> I thought about returning it, but I was like, it's, a, it's fine. It's yeah. huh. still a cool hat. Okay, yeah. well, that's all I got for the Bible part that we were talking yeah. about. Yeah. Anyway, we're getting a little off track here. <laughs> yeah. Talking about um, it. it's but it's a it's a very dense passage. Go it read it. It is very dense. Um, Pull out some commentary. Yeah. Go crazy. You it know, is. There's a lot. There's a lot in here that is good stuff to yeah. know. The stuff that God has revealed. So go go dig into that, and we'll see you on Wednesday. Uh, we're talking about instruments. How were they made? How, not no, how were they made, but how they work? that was last week Wednesday. Nuh-uh. Yeah, huh? Nope. Yeah, because we... But, okay. <laughs> we're talking about instruments and how they work. So, if you're interested in that, go look at uh, Wednesday's episode and wait for it to come out. Watch the premiere on YouTube, if you will. Uh, and we'll see you then for another heaping healthy ladle of peas. Bye, guys. Bye.